It's now the middle of October and available inventory of homes for sale is declining in most of the country. We've talked a lot in recent weeks about the two-tier U.S. housing market where some parts of the country have record high levels of inventory and other parts of the country are still at record low levels. The markets in the Midwest and Northeast still have very tight inventory and the Sun Belt has a ton of unsold homes. And this trend is likely to dominate the U.S. housing picture for the rest of the year at least. It shouldn't be a surprise that even as nationally inventory is steadily moving lower, that change is not spread evenly across the states. In the four biggest states, Texas, Florida, California, and Georgia, inventory is quite obviously past the seasonal peak, down a few percent from September, and trending lower each week. The next three biggest states in terms of available inventory of homes on the market are North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arizona. Those states are pretty much still at the seasonal peak of homes for sale. Uh, All three are basically flat since September and maybe even still inching higher with more homes on the market. Uh, The states where inventory is the tightest, New York, Illinois, Connecticut, Massachusetts, these states have very few homes for sale, and we've been watching closely for any signs that inventory finally grows there, but there really haven't been any sign of that trend changing yet. For the time being, it seems like this north-south divide in the country is going to stay in place. Very tight inventory in the Midwest and Northeast with a ton of homes for sale across the Sun Belt. These Polar opposite supply conditions have an impact on home prices as well. Home prices are still climbing and at record highs across the Rust Belt. Home prices are down versus last year in many of the southern states. Nationally, home prices on average are still higher than a year ago, though that momentum is slowing. Even in most of those tight inventory markets, Home prices do not have much upward momentum. I think it's quite possible that we see headlines by the end of the year that say home prices are down nationally. So I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the chief economist for Compass. In these videos, I look at the U.S. housing market data every week. Our goal is to help everyone understand what's actually happening in the market right now so they can make the best decisions when buying or selling a home. In these videos, I use data from Altos Research as well as insights from what we see at Compass, the largest real estate brokerage in the country by sales volume. If you like the videos and our weekly housing market data, please add yourself to our new Compass Intelligence mailing list. There's a link in the description below to join us. Click that link and add your name to the list. We send the Compass Intelligence email every Monday with the data, the slides, and the video. So link below to join us. So it's the middle of October already, 2025. Let's take a look at the latest housing market data. The available inventory of unsold homes on the market nationally fell by nearly 1% this week. This is a totally normal behavior for the middle of October. There are fewer new listings each week, a handful of sales are still happening, and plenty of withdrawals for sellers who will try again in the spring. The unsold inventory, total unsold inventory, peaked at 1.1 million homes on the market in early August, with 865,000 of those single-family homes and condos making up another 230,000 units. There are only a couple percent fewer now than that. Uh, Inventory has not started the steep decline that we expect for the holiday season, but next week I actually expect the holiday season to begin pretty obviously. I have a 10-year view of inventory here. I've highlighted the in gray the old normal levels of inventory. The peak inventory in 2025 is about the lows of the last decade. Earlier in the summer, I expected inventory to keep rising much later in the year. For this line to rise more into the the old normal zone. But inventory peaked back here in August and has been dipping since then. In our two-tier U.S. housing market, this means that Texas and Florida inventory built quickly last year. 
So national inventory increased. This year, Florida's active inventory is now 10% lower than it was just a few months ago. Texas is down 5% from the recent highs. This is not just a seasonal effect either. Florida inventory grew for 110 weeks in a row from May 23 to June 2025 without any seasonal retraction. But that pattern has now changed. There are obviously a lot of homes on the market in Florida. That's 162,000 homes, so 96,000 single-family homes and another 66,000 condos. It's a lot, and home prices are down in Florida as a result, but the trend has now changed. There is quite obviously a contraction in the number of homes for sale. Meanwhile, on the other side of the country, places like New York or Illinois, inventory is barely growing. When I watch for an end to this two-tier market, I'd expect the northern market's inventory to start to grow back closer to the old normal levels. And I haven't seen any evidence of that yet. Maybe as the economy slows and if unemployment keeps moving higher, then we'll see that moves the needle for sellers in the Midwest and Northeast, perhaps. So far in 2025, we're still stuck in these two separate markets. So even as total inventory has started to move lower for the fall, September's lower mortgage rates seem to maybe have teased a few sellers off the sidelines. So there were 65,000 newly listed single family homes uh, for sale this week, plus another 15,000 condos. That's 80,000 new listings. That pace was an uptick from the week prior and the most for this early October period since the pandemic. Uh, it is important to note that there's still very few sellers each week, really. And in, in this October period, in the old days, it would be common to see 90,000 newly listed homes. And if the fact that there were only 80,000 now says a lot. But you can see in this chart here where I'm showing the smooth 90-day rolling average, uh, of the new listings that the last few weeks have turned horizontal. I think it's notable that the number of new listings each week is not dropping. In fact, it seems like just a few more sellers might be testing the market. In the new listings data, you can see the seasonal peak happens back in May uh, with each week the sellers, fewer sellers uh, through the summer. In the last few weeks, we've seen this little floor on the number of sellers, and that coincides with slightly improving mortgage rates. The same pattern happened last year with lower mortgage rates in that September-October period. One way to interpret why this might happen is to recognize that most sellers are also buyers. If I'm thinking of moving, when mortgage rates drop, I see that it is maybe time to take action to buy. Then I also need to list my current house for sale. So a little improvement in demand also creates improvement in supply. Now, these are very nuanced interpretations in the data. But in this chart, you can see the blue line in the last few weeks turned up. This mirrors the pattern from last September when mortgage rates fell. You can see that in last year's purple line right there. The uh, That's different behavior from, say, 2013 or 2022 when rates were climbing late in the year. So in 2022, in particular, this yellow line shows a steep drop off in sellers each week in the second half of the year. Everything was contracting at that point, demand and supply. So the takeaway from the new listings data now is that if we get lucky and rates continue to head lower for the rest of the year, I think we see in the data that more home sales are waiting to happen. If we get lucky, then we could finally see some obvious growth in the market in 2026. Now, I'm talking about home sales, the number of transactions. When I look to growth for 2026, as of now, the weekly pending home sales count continues to come in a few percent above the year ago levels. If money gets even a little cheaper this winter, that enables a lot more sales maybe to happen in 2026. So this week we counted 64,000 single family home sales plus another 13,000 condo sales started. That's 6% more contracts than the same time last year. 
Last year's October pace was about 4 million annualized and climbing. The, the annual pace of home sales in Q4 2024 picked up with lower mortgage rates. So when the September NAR existing home sales data is released in a few weeks, I expect it to rep report an increase over the 2024 levels by a couple percent. In this view of the weekly pending home sales, you can see that we've had nine weeks in a row uh, that have slightly more contracts than in 2024. These are not huge gains, but I choose to interpret it as mildly optimistic. In our two-tier housing market, here's an interesting takeaway. The states with the most inventory growth over the last several years are the states with the most sales volume growth in 2024. Florida and Texas, for example, have several percent more home sales happening now than last year. Whereas New York and Illinois are still supply-constrained markets and sales volumes are fewer than 2024. In Florida, most metros are actually showing growth in sales, except for Jacksonville, which is still not showing any recovery in home sales volumes over 2024. This is a two-tier housing market. We know that in general, in 2025, home price growth has been decelerating. By most measures nationally, home prices are still higher than last year at this time, but it's only like 1% to 2% growth over last year. As mortgage rates have dipped recently, we've seen a little resilience uh, nationally, so maybe that downward trend gets resistance. Of course, that's a national view, and we have a two-tier housing market. Depending on how you measure prices, there are as many as 13 states with prices lower than last year. Texas and Florida, of course, but also Georgia and Colorado and Arizona and Nevada. Uh, home prices are down in those markets where inventory is up to record highs, Home prices are still climbing where inventory is at record lows. I've reported on the active market price per square foot stat. That measure of home prices ticked down this week to just under $215 per foot. Uh, that's now 40 basis points below last year at this time nationally, 40 basis points, uh, less than 1%, but, but down. If I look at just the homes in contract, that uh, price per square foot is just 10 basis points above last year. So it depends on how you measure home prices, but generally they're all sliding lower, even if the most recent weeks have seen some resilience in price, it's not enough to reverse the trend. In the two-tier U.S. housing market, the states where inventory is tight have fewer sales, but prices stay elevated. Those states where inventory has grown have more sales, but they're happening at slightly lower prices than a year ago. As inventory contracts in the Sun Belt, will it be enough to reverse the falling price trend? That reversal is not underway yet. Uh, supply has to turn first, and that inflection point is just starting now. So how should we use the leading indicators like the pr price reductions when looking at this two-tier housing market? So I was in Colorado last week with a few hundred agents. Colorado has benefited for many years with inbound migration from the Midwest, Northeast, and also California. As that migration slowed, the unsold inventory in Colorado has really built up. Time on market is way up. Supply As supply is high and demand is light, more home sellers have to reduce their asking price. In Denver, over 55% of the homes on the market have taken price reductions. Denver is the metro with the most price cuts in the country currently. Part of this is seasonal. It's late in the year, and sellers who want to get a deal done before the holidays are much more likely to cut prices now. Uh, nationally, though, pr price reductions have topped off for the year. Since mortgage rates have been easing lower for a few months, we can see that demand stays more stable. Nationally, price cuts have been basically unchanged since July. In places like Colorado, we know that inventory is at the highs and price pressures are strong. But as sales are starting to pick higher, we want to watch the price reductions here and see if demand picks up enough to, port, to support sales prices in the future. 
Nationally, nationally, we see a little bit of that support. In this chart, each line is a year. The blue line from 2025 has been stable for several months uh, as mortgage rates have eased lower and as inventory has stopped growing. So there are fewer new listings each week. There are more withdrawals. These factors keep a, total, a lid on total supply. If you're a buyer, your selection has not grown. So some offers are getting done. The takeaway for price reductions data is that the level is high and that implies that our future sales price headlines still have room to move lower. The fact that it is stable shows that slight demand improvement with, flat, with fractionally lower mortgage rates. So if we get lucky and that trend continues, then we should be able to measure demand right here. Maybe the two-tier market story shifts to growth in 2026. So that's what I'm watching for. Like that's that's what the the price reductions data can show us. So that's all the data we have time for today. If you want to make sure that you don't miss any of the weekly data and video commentary, you should sign up for our email list. There's a link in the description below to add your name to that list. All right, thanks everybody. More next week.